It's my great pleasure today to introduce Dr. Chiwan Lee. He's the Leslie A. Geddes Professor of Biomedical Engineering at, in, in the Weldon School of Biomedical Engineering, as, as Arvin just pointed out. And uh, I've gotten to know Chiwan for, uh, as, as a colleague over the years, and he is just on a tre tremendous trajectory in doing real work that impacts human lives in the clinical settings. So uh, he's also a professor uh, in mechanical engineering and courtesy through materials engineering here at Purdue. He got his MS and PhD degrees in mechanical engineering from Stanford University with Professor Xiaoling Zheng in two 2009 and 2013, respectively. Prior to joining Purdue in 2015, he was a postdoctoral researcher um, in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign with Professor Jim Rogers, John Rogers. His scholarly efforts are dedicated to addressing unmet clinical needs using novel yet simple wearable devices and a clear path towards translation to produce measurable clinical and economic impacts. He received a number of prestigious awards, including the 2021 Sensors Young Investigator Award, the 2020 College of Engineering Early Career Research Award, the 2019 NIH Trailblazer Award, and the 2019 Korean American Scientists and Engineering Association Young Investigator Award. He's published over 60 papers, uh, four book chapters, four patents in the U.S., 11 utility patents, 12 provisional, launched three startup companies, recently got an RL1 grant with colleagues looking at, uh, at uh, um, uh, what, what's the technology? That is, it's it's drug-eluting um, contact lenses and uh, more on the way, hopefully. Fingers crossed. It's my great pleasure to introduce Chi Wan Lee, and uh, thank you for, for coming and listening to his presentation. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the College of Engineering for giving me this opportunity to celebrate my promotion. <laughs> so I've been actually thinking about what to say today throughout the uh, uh, Thanksgiving holiday, and I decided to spend my 10 minutes to thank all of you who have been extremely supportive to my you know, first step to little success at, at, at Purdue University over the years. Uh, looking back to the... Um, uh, the past six years at Purdue, I think it, it has been quite a challenging time, especially through ongoing pandemic. And then uh, I, many times I feel like I'm trapped in the infinite loop to keep generating grant proposal, journal publication, you know, service, teaching, mentoring, again and again and again infinitely. That's not an easy job, I think. And especially I found that dealing with the Libya number two is the most stressful job over the year. So without your uh, great support and help, I don't think I could get through this difficult time. So today, I'd like to thank all of you. That is my, my celebration. First of all, I'd like to thank Purdue and the search committees uh, who, who have really good eye to ping me six years ago, including uh, Professor Ali Sakri, Tim Fisher, Pedro Irajaki, uh, actually. As you may notice here, actually two of them have left Purdue already. So I think it is time to do something for Ali uh, to keep him here. Uh, anyhow, I think uh, I truly believe that Purdue is one of the uh, world-class top university where especially the junior faculty can be successful. I believe that Purdue provides very unique working environment. Let me give you my example. Six years ago when I was in job market, I got invited for on-site interview from eight different schools across the world. Two of them were Purdue. So at that time, I defined myself as a 100% mechanical engineer by the training. And, then, and therefore, I applied for, I, I have, had not, never applied for any bio-related schools at that time. I only applied for mechanical engineering uh, by the nature of my research. At that time, my research was about you know, flexible, lightweight solar cells. I call this a solar sticker so that you can attach to anywhere you want. So Professor Ali Sakuri invited me for the on-site interview through mechanical engineering at the time, and I gave a talk about this solar sticker. And we, I proposed to him to use the world-class state-of-art roll-to-roll facility in the Berkeley Nanotechnology Center at Purdue for the potential mass production of my solar sticker. That was the, my proposal. And we went to Bistro 501 for dinner with uh, Professor Tim Fisher, and he brought very brilliant idea to the table. 
and he talked about potential application of my solar sticker for many biomedical applications. That was quite interesting. So, so actually, uh, it, he, on the table, actually, he sent a text message to Professor Pedro Irajaki, who was the Surgery Committee Chair in BME at that time. And he sent me an email in the same night saying that, hey, are you interested in giving another talk in BME? And I, I, I replied back to him, hey, my research is about solar sticker. Would that be OK? He said, no problem, just come. So I came back to Purdue again in the following week for another talk in BME. And then uh, I, I, it turns out that all the meetings with a number of faculties in BME, as well as other uh, bio-related departments and schools and research centers, went really productive. So it was really exciting opportunity. So I, I, I feel like uh, the Purdue has no barrier between the labs, the schools, you know, centers, and so on and so on. And uh, I think that I could work with uh, such a world class, you know, top class colleagues and students, regardless of their department or, or schools, or whatever affiliations. So that was actually a very unique opportunity uh, for Purdue. Actually, none of other universities had a, had a make, made an, uh, a, such an attractive offer with this condition. So I, I decided to come to Purdue. And I, over the time, of course, I found, uh, I identified many good things many other good things about Purdue, and actually these are the several keywords that I have used whenever I serve as a search committee members to convince them to come to Purdue. And I always emphasize that we're moving toward a stress-free working environment. In the next slide, I'd like to thank uh, my uh, 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 the mentors, role models, and readers. Actually, there are uh, many beautiful pictures over there uh, you're missing now. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, all of their great support uh, throughout the year. Uh, I, I, I'm really always feeling like I'm a lucky guy to have them. Uh, page number three, have these guys as my mentor. Um, the ne next page, actually, this one. Yeah, here you go. Here's my mentors, leaders, and role models. I really appreciate their Great support, yeah. What's really impressive thing is that uh, they never say no for whatever I ask. They always say yes. That's the one of the, my key success factor. As soon as I joined Purdue University uh, six years ago, I reached out to Professor Keenan Park in BME, who is the, uh, one of the most successful faculty uh, in nearly every aspect, including research, teaching, mentoring, and entrepreneurship. So he very naturally become one of my role models. So I knock his door and ask about his secret source to the success. And he emphasized me these the following three key success factor. The first is whiskey and golf. And then he always say that, what would be the point of your life if you don't know how to enjoy whiskey and golf? Just enjoy your life first. That's the first wisdom of, from him. And then he emphasized this real world impact. Real world impact. He always said, Chihuan, you better, better understand about the clinical need in the BME field. You need to meet clinical mentors, the doctors, medical doctors, nurses, caregivers, patients. Better understand what they need. They know the problem. And as an engineer, you know the solution, or you can figure out the solution. So, it turns out that actually it, it, it Kinam was very light. So I always take this uh, wise man's advice very seriously. So I took, I took uh, my first and second year at Purdue to give a, a volunteer giving a seminar in many, many non-engineering departments, including IU Medicine, Optometry, Michigan Medicine, Purdue Vascul, uh, Pharmacy, Speech Language Hearing Sciences. And throughout the courses, I could be able to form very uh, interdisciplinary Avengers teams with a number of, uh, number of such a top, world top class uh, researchers and scientists. I'm always feeling blessed to work with them, and, and, and I'm so proud of uh, being a part of these Avengers teams. And we have secured a total of $27 million over the past six years from multiple funding agencies, and we keep generating joint publications together. Uh, and lastly, and the mostly, I'd like to thank my mentees. Uh, I think uh, all of my 
group members are over there, uh, backside. And uh, uh, I'm always feeling like I'm lucky guy to work with uh, such a talented and, and self-motivated students and postdoc. And as you can see here again, so uh, my group has, has a, a lot of student postdocs from different backgrounds. They are from ME, BME, MSc, IBSc, and MD, PhD, and so on and so on. So I really like this environment. So I really appreciate Purdue uh, that allow me to do these things. And this in, in, interdisciplinary working environment worked really well. And one of my, uh, uh, some of my first PhD students in a BME and ME and my first postdoc in uh, BME have successfully settled down to the tenure track assistant professor at their, their dream schools. Even after, right after they got PhD degree from Purdue, and just two months later, they got the job offer. And I also have my first postdoc in BME who has become a senior scientist, research scientist at Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology. Surprisingly, his, his salary is higher than mine. So I think uh, we got to do something to fill this gap. So thank you for your uh, attention, and I'll be happy to answer any question. Were there any particular instances as you were going from a transition into doing more clinically applied biomedical engineering that were aha moments or transitions that you remember looking back over the past six years that were really impactful? I think uh, it took nearly three years to uh, you know, successfully identify the, the practical cl clinical needs out there and the former uh, the Avengers team, the first Avengers team to tackle the problem. And through, I think the, the most difficult time for my uh, uh, career was the first three years. So I gave a lot of talks in many different places, you know, non-engineering places. Trust me, it is very uncomfortable experience to give a talk in front of medical doctors as an engineer. So I was very, very nervous at the beginning, but I get used to it eventually and I, I try to listen. Uh, their need, and I tried to find a solution with my colleagues. It took three years. And then uh, it, it, it didn't happen suddenly. It's just very naturally, it's getting better. Uh, and then uh, we uh, worked together to tackle the problems along the way. And I think uh, every aspect, you know, I cannot most light, you know, if I focus on the real world impact first of all, all other things follow naturally. He always told me that, Chiwan, you don't need to worry about tenure. You don't need to worry about number of paper, impact factor, no worry about it. You should care about real world impact first. All other things follow naturally. He was light, I think he was light. So uh, yeah, that's, that's my story. Very natural transition. Yeah, Wayne. Expand your companies for the real world impact, then you don't need to worry about the salary issue. <laughs> <laughs> You are partially light. <laughs> You'll be rich. <laughs> Thank you for the comment. Yeah. Jihuan, what's next? What's next? Thank you for asking. Uh, actually, I have a couple of plans. Actually, Kinam gave me three, uh, three advice, but I, I have been quite busy to enjoy the first two things. So that's my, <laughs> that's, uh, I, I need to learn how to enjoy whiskey and golf. Uh, that's my, um, uh, one of my part of plan. But I think uh, David wouldn't dis uh, agree with this, my plan. So I have a near-term and future goal plan. Near-term goal, as a low-hanging fruit, I want to make uh, the Weldon School within national top 10 engineering school in the near future. I'm talking about low-hanging fruit. My long-term goal is to make it national top five. <laughs> and my personal goal, actually, uh, is pretty much well aligned with what Kinam say. I really want to make a real-world impact with my Avengers teams. Uh, I'm not talking about 100 years later, within my lifetime, uh, I wanna make that happen. All right, thank you very much, Chiwan. Thank you, everyone. One more time. <laughs>